Charlie Cobbs and cycling. <laughs> Just climbing out of Cape Jervis as you do in Adelaide. Uh, and we have a beautiful, beautiful attempt for a KOM. So we've just climbed up Kate Jervis and then basically the descent keeps going. So Dan's like, right, I'm gonna go on the front. And Dan's a pretty big bloke, so he can put some incredible power on the front. So we're getting like 60 Ks an hour. I remember just sitting on the back of me like, this is insane. Look at the power I'm doing. I'm doing like 80 watts and we're going like 63 Ks an hour down the minus 3% gradient. This is great fun. It's sometimes like when the, when you know the descent's not super technical, pretty flat, there's something really fun about it. Absolutely flying down. You can see we're going 60 k's an hour on a minus 1%, and then it's now pretty much 0%, and we're still going 60 k's an hour. And like, this is when it's so nice just having like a bigger gear, like the 5211. This is why I feel like over the sort of 55, this is where you can keep your cadence not too high, um, and it's quite nice. You sort of have a lot more control. Well, when you have a 5011, you sort of need to spin a bit more. But obviously, it has its advantages on the steep stuff. But anyway, as you can see, we are flying along, trying to get the KOM. We had a pretty solid time. We did about 20 minutes up to the... Um, up to the actual top of the climb. Then this is more like, I wouldn't really call it a descent, I'd say it's more like a rolling, a rolling descent sort of type of thing. So you can see we sort of spike it up here, um, as the gradient starts to come up and we lose a bit of speed here. I think we took about two or three minutes off the KOM, and it's insane. You can see here, sprinting up the little climb. And um, it's just great fun, like, get, trying to get these KOM sometimes. Like, obviously they don't really mean anything, like, let's be honest. Um, it's just a bit of bump with the legs. Um, but it's good, it's good to like, if you don't want to race or whatever, just do this. Um, and it's also just quite fun, but quite fun trolling people with the KOMs. Um, but whenever Dan goes out, he pretty much gets like always a couple and people get pretty angry about that. Uh, but I'd say like tips for this, tips for getting like KOMs like this is just like, don't always pick the, the, the KOM, <laughs> which will be the hardest, like climbing to the top of Cape Jervis. Okay, fine. Only about a hundred people have done it because in order to, do the climb, you literally have to descend into the bottom of Cape Jervis and go straight back out. There's no actual reason you do the climb apart from just getting extra Ks, so it's not super popular. But like those climbs are quite easy to get KOMs. These descents, like something afterwards, so I, I got like a top 10 yesterday on some Norton Summit segment, which was like going up to Norton Summit from a weird place and then descending it. So sometimes you can get like those ones where you sort of go up and down or like do repeats. So I made another similar video, which I'll probably link afterwards, how to get KOMs. If you're not the strongest rider, because let's be honest, there aren't many people who can go up like a very popular segment, let's say like Box Hill in the UK or Norton Summit here or wherever else you ride where there's sort of like 20,000 people. Like it's quite hard to get a KOM as a pro rider, but you can get sort of like lo loops of climbs or like just things like that. Anyway, I'll link it in the description. So you can see here we're, this is when the um, arrow top, so when you're sort of going over about 60 k's an hour um, on the descent, 60, 65, that's when it just makes sense to get in the arrow top. Obviously it depends on the headwind. You can see Dan's really spinning out his 50-11 here. Still got very good cadence, but you can see here, the draft is incredible because when you're behind someone, this is when you really notice it. Like sometimes you even have to break just because um, you actually, you get such a big draft on the descent. Uh, because obviously it, if you think you get a decent draft of like 30, 40 k's an hour, but at 60 k's an hour, you get an incredible draft. So if you if you do it right, you can literally just stay error and not even pedal on the downhills um, at all, even if the person ahead of you is doing like 400 watts, just because you're so aero. Um, and you're well, and the drag, the draft is just so big. So you can see we're coming out of a one percent gradient, and this is when actually getting out the saddle is not the best thing to do, just because your aero drag increases so much. And at 46 k's an hour, that, that does matter. Obviously, at lower speeds, 20, 25, still matters. Getting out the saddle um, is a little less error, but when you're going 50, it really does make sense. Not sure if Dan wants me to pull a turn, but I'm like, nah, I'm all right, mate. <laughs> As you do, I'm pretty lazy when it comes to pulling turns, mate. I'm just like, ah, I'll do it if I have to, but otherwise, I'll just chill out at the back. And I think Dan, basically, the way he KOMs hunts, which is actually quite clever, is that he has his Strava Premium up on his phone, and records the ride and has the headphones speak to him. So he's listening to music and he's like, on a climb, it will be like halfway, 10 seconds ahead. And it also tells you when the segments start and end. And I think it's a lot better than having the live segments on your like Wahoo or Garmin, just because it ends up messing up with your, if you want to have lap power or whatever, it ends up messing that up. And they're not really super accurate or like, they're just annoying, they just bleep everywhere. But on the headphones, it's just a lot better, I think. Uh, so that's definitely a top tip, the whole KOM hunting. Um, and you see here, this is when up to 4%, we're still going 34 k's an hour, which is pretty view. I'm not really sure if the gradient's actually true, because that seems a bit, little bit fast. I mean, we did have a tailwind, but even so, like 30 k's an hour on a 5% gradient is like 6.5 cents per kilo. But anyway, I'll take it. <laughs> and um, you can see my gains here is actually decent. Like, I've been, I've been noticing recently my gains has been dropping a lot, which I'm not really super happy about. But I think it's just because I've been, 
I don't really have super good gears and going up steep stuff, so I sort of just got used to riding like 70 cadence, 60 cadence, so like 200 watts. So when I bring it up to like 300 watts, I still go at like 75, 80 cadence, which is a little low. But you can see here, we come towards the end of the segment, absolutely beautiful place um, in Cape Joe. So if you're in Adelaide, or uh, I definitely recommend coming down to the south, cars are a lot more chilled out, there's just a lot less traffic, and there's some really nice riding, and it's not as popular, so it's pretty easy to get KOMs or do well. So we did 200k this 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 ride, and I got some KOMs, which was nice, and had a real solid day out. So we're just coming towards the end of the segment, which is on the right-hand side of the road, just before a little cafe, which has some... I think the segment actually ends here. My Wahoo pretended that I went off to the right through the middle of the, the trees, but luckily Strava managed to link it all up and I got like second place, I think, or something. Um, and Dan got the KOM, so you can see, just come to the end of the segment, rolling up to the old convenience store, the general store, the Delamere General Store. What a place. Spent a couple hours there on our 200k ride. Anyway, cheers for watching, and see you in the next vid.